G'day guys, we man here. Welcome back to the workshop. We are doing some quick stuff before we get to Juggernauts because Juggernauts are showing up on, at least the ones that I'm looking at, are showing up a lot of different stuff that keeps them like alive longer, that, that help them with like the damage because they're meant to be in there wading through enemies and sort of like pounding people to dust and not dying themselves. So you've got a lot of um, internal structure types and armor types that we haven't really gone into, but that help with that sort of thing. So I thought we'd start with the internal stuff. So I've got some internal structure options, and we've also got armored components, which we may as well do at the same time. Here with Adam again. Just in case I didn't mention that, he is here. I was quite excited because Terrence found some things that I haven't heard about. Uh, well, so I mean, like, some of them will be new to people. Some people haven't got tech ops. Some people aren't really delving into stuff. And these things come up and then you have to look them up and go, what the hell is that? And how does it work? So, you know, rather than do that during the Juggernauts video, we I, I thought maybe we'll just split it off and do it separate. So these are internal structure types. Now, bear in mind, I'm only looking at tech ops. So armor types, structure types, all of that sort of stuff. I might not have all of them. In fact, I'm dead sure I don't have all of them because some of them are in strategic ops and I don't own a copy of strategic ops yet. I've got one on the way, I think. Uh, but internal structure. So you'll probably be familiar with standard internal structure and endo steel internal structure. Okay, so the yeah, endo steel gives common. you, um, saves you weight but takes up slots. Yeah. Right? Okay. So there's also one called composite structure. Uh, composite structure is half as much as standard internal structure for weight and doesn't occupy any internal slots in the unit's design. So you're saving half the weight and it doesn't take up any slots. Before but you get excited, wait, wait. this is like a very early on... Put your wallet away. Yeah, don't, don't buy it yet. <laughs> Think very hard about this one because this is very early tech. This is very, um, it, it's very early stages on them trying to figure out how to save weight but not take up the space that endo steel does. Right. So all damage to internal structure of a mech using composite structure is doubled. So if you take one point of damage to your internal structure and you, you're using composite structure, you take you cross two bubbles off. If you take five points of damage, you cross ten bubbles off. Oh, that's so bad. That is bad, that's right? Really that is bad. really, really bad. It's, it. uh, it's half the weight and it doesn't take up any locations, but it is really brittle, right? They haven't figured out how to make it stronger. They've just figured out how to make it lighter but not take up the space, right? So that, like I say, this is early stuff. Uh, the Fed Suns, actually, uh, are working on this. Uh, excess damage that transfers to a location still protected by armor must apply in accordance with the rules for the specific armor type. So if your arm is taking internal damage, you double all of that internal damage, and then when it transfers to the torso, it hits the armor and follows the rules for the armor yeah. instead of doing double. So it, it kind of saves you a little bit there, but once your armor is gone, if you're using composite structure, you are in serious trouble. Okay, so, so... So don't get hit. Don't get hit. Think twice before you let people shoot at you. This is, this is important. I mean, I guess, <laughs> I guess the lighter the unit, the, the, the more benefit it could be. Mm. Because, yeah, like for like a recon scout unit, something that just wants to get some intel and bugger off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's a lot of, that could be a lot of space. A lot of tonnage. A lot of space, a lot of tonnage. I mean, you're halving the weight of the internal structure and also not taking up any critical slots. Now, everybody should be aware that there's 14 slots for endo steel. It's 14, right? For inner sphere. For inner sphere, yeah. yeah. For clans. Uh, clans. Yeah, clans. <laughs> yeah, don't talk to me about clans. But yeah, it's it's that's 14 locations that you've just saved space, uh, weight, but you don't have any space left now. So it's like you're wait, what do I do, sort of thing, you know? Now, that's listed as 3056 and 3061, Federated Commonwealth and Federated Sons. They started working on this, and they got design prototypes and things, but it is very base-level stuff. It's their first attempts at this. Now, endo-composite structure is listed as being 3063 
out to 3067, and it's Lyra Alliance. Nice. Nice. Uh, so Endo Composite functions in gameplay by the same rules as Endo Steel, and it's three quarters as much as standard structure for weight, 75% rounded up to the nearest half ton, and occupies half as many slots rounded up as normal Endo Steel. So seven slots for, for Inner Sphere and four slots for Clan. But you've you've got it's three quarters as much, so you you're seventy five percent less, right? So it's it's a lot of a it's weight saving, but you've still got that seven slots for in the sphere that you have to find a spot for. But that's half, right? That's really handy for quads. Mm. So it, it's actually a a good solid like compromise between the extremely brittle composite structure which doesn't have any locations and saves you 50% of the weight. Yeah. And then your internal just endo steel that takes up all of those slots, but saves you 50% of the weight. So this one, it, it's kind of a, a mash between the two. So it saves you more weight, but it still takes up some slots. Well, you know, the Alliance does actually have like quite a few nice mechs that are quads. <laughs> so that'd be really good. I wouldn't mind having that. They, they've got, like, that's saving oh. them a lot of space for their big cannons and junk. That's that's actually pretty cool. Um, oh, I like, yeah, I like that. Mm. That's, that's cool. Now, one that shows up, this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this, is reinforced structure. Okay, so reinforced structure weighs twice as much as standard structure, but requires no slot space. So you double the weight. But this stuff is really good. So each point of reinforced structure can sustain two points of damage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. To re this is There's an armor type that does the same thing, so you'll see me repeating this. But to reflect this, when marking damage off on a location with this structure type, draw a single slash through the structure bubble for the first point of damage sustained and a second slash making an X for blocking it out completely after the second point. At which point any remaining damage transfers normally... Furthermore, when rolling to determine critical hits, this is cool, on a unit with reinforced structure, minus one modifier applies to the roll, roll result. Yes. So oh. you're, you're reinforcing that internal structure and you're stopping those critical hits from being quite as damaging and you're soaking up that damage in, in the internal structure. It weighs twice as much, which sucks. But like I say, with juggernauts, you've got, some solid weight categories there and you're not you're not too fussed about that extra weight as long as you can get something that lives a long time while it's wading through things you see yeah okay so it can it can sustain each bubble is two points of damage basically okay so let's have a look i just happened to have a book open here because <laughs> we were talking about the cigar sort of, yeah, yeah. yeah the huptman and we'll we're gonna talk we're probably actually going to talk about that in the juggernaut because it's quite nice it's anyway, a good one. but the internal structure uh what do we got here we've got 20 per leg 20 per torso 16 per arm 30 for the center torso i'm just looking at you're paying i think it's like what's it five yeah. tons five um, tons to get that much armor I don't have my armor. tech manual that's okay 16 <laughs> you just it's six you get 16 per ton yeah. Of armor, normally. Of armor, yeah. yeah. But it's, uh, this is internal structure that we're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, I'm just looking, yeah, but I'm looking at, because it's keeping you in the game. So you can look yeah. at it as armor. It's not quite armor, but if you're, if that component, if that, that leg or that arm, especially legs, they stay up. Uh, if I say reinforced structure for this guy and make him a. This one's 95. Yeah, so 95. Oops. So a standard biped with standard structure that weighs the internal structure is weighing nine and a half tons at the moment. Okay. So yeah, I can't see. You, I think you round it up. Yet. So you you're and still the reinforced so to be five tons. Yeah. So the reinforced goes up to nineteen tons that you're using for the internal structure, which is insane. That's three thirty twenty twenty three thirty twenty twenty and sixteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same same thing. But yeah, it's, it goes from nine and a half-ish tons to 19 tons. So that is a lot of weight to be putting into this sort of thing. But it means that those 
like if I'm previewing it here, the center torso has 30 points of internal structure. That yeah. means you can sustain mm -hmm. 60 points of damage to that internal structure before it's destroyed. That's right. Now, let's say you work in through a leg or an arm, which is what you would normally do. The legs are 20 points. So that is 40 points of damage to destroy the internal structure of that, that unit's leg in, in totality. Like, block, get, get rid of it, destroy it completely. It's 40 points of damage. So that's just insane. And every critical, every time you're hitting that and rolling criticals, you've got a minus one modifier to your thing. And I'm pretty sure 12 sits by itself on the, the critical roll. So, And that includes the head, right? That includes the head. So it's six points of damage to the head. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty full on. I, th I think that actually is for a lot of these big wading in and dishing out and taking damage mechs, that is actually something that I would consider very, very seriously. Even doubling the weight of your internal structure, it's still possibly worth it. I mean... Well, the thing is, though, is like using the, the hot one, the 95 tons, mm. okay, if you add up all of that, because that's essentially what you're getting for your five tons. Yeah. So per ton, you're getting the value of 29. Okay. Yep. Whereas your outer armor is, as standard, 16 per ton. So I know you're getting criticals by getting extra internal structure. Yep. But as far as keeping you in the game <laughs> for value... That is, that is insanely good. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's insanely good. And yeah, the, the, the critical hits will never get... You'll never get three all in blown off because it's a minus one. And that takes the 12 out. Yeah. So the highest you can get is an 11. Yeah. Which means you're never going to get that limb blown off. You're never going to get three critical hits. The most anyone can get is two critical hits. So, like I say, for these sort of mechs that are being designed to wade in, and I've got a really good, well, I've got a couple of really good examples of, of how this works. They are just, it's insanely, insanely good for them. Um, and while we're on internal structure, I think it might be a good idea to go to... Um, Armoured components, um, because this is all internal stuff as well. So components just covers basically anything you're putting inside the mech, right? So anything that's going into the mech, uh, equipment, weapons, electronica, cockpits, sensors, all of that, engine, everything, right? The only thing I think that you're not allowed to armour is um, ammo. So I don't think you can armour your ammo uh, bins right so what you've got yeah except for ammo bins case and other items that have roll again effects so like ferrofibrous armor and things like that you can't armor but anything else can be armored so if you're willing to pay an extra half a ton for each slot they occupy on a standard battle mech then you are able to make that component that you're fitting into your mech armored and what happens is you put your like a little circle or something next to that un that piece of equipment slots. So let's say it's a PPC. Okay, so you've got a PPC, you're putting it in, you've got three slots. So you put your PPC in the arm, you have to pay an extra one and a half because there's three slots for a PPC. It's three slots. Yeah, it is. Yeah, 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 so I'm not getting this wrong. Hopefully I'm not getting <laughs> this wrong. So there's three slots for the PPC. So to armor each, that piece of equipment, that component, you pay half a ton for each slot, so that's one and a half extra tons for that PPC. But each of those slots can now tank one critical hit without being destroyed. So not the point of damage, it's a critical hit that mm. is rolled for that location. Yeah. Right. I, oh, yeah, so okay. when you roll your critical hit locations and you get, say, one critical hit and you roll and you get one of the slots of the PPC, yep. normally that slot of the PPC is crossed off yep. and the PPC is non-functional. Yeah, true. Right, but there's still two slots there to soak up critical hits, but that PPC, because one slot's crossed off, is no longer functional, uh, right? That's how they normally work, yeah, right? Yeah, With armoured components, as long as you're willing to pay that extra tonnage, each one of those slots can now tank one hit. Yeah. So you put a little cross next to it and say, okay, that's taken one hit, or you colour a little circle in or something, that's taken one hit. If that slot gets hit again then you cross it off. Right. 
Jeez. And that is that is pretty powerful. It doesn't sound like much, but that's pretty full on. Well, that's great for a cockpit. Yeah, well, <laughs> straight up. <laughs> I, I'm just going to say that the one of the small exceptions is that a cockpit will always take uh, a full ton to properly armor. They factored in mm. the cup holder, yeah. but but not, not with armoring it up. So you've got to fit the air conditioner in redesigned still and all it. that yeah, stuff. Got it. Okay, yeah, so yeah. every other slot is like even your engines. So the example they give in the book is an, in an inner sphere light engine, which gives ten critical slots total across the torsos and everything it adds five tons to its total weight if installed as armored and each one of those can tank one critical hit nice which is pretty cool nice right that's pretty damn cool uh the only exception is cockpit which adds one ton of armor to the cockpit weight so you've seen us build mechs on screen we always go through and say the co cockpit is like three tons or something like yeah, that standard cockpit standard yeah. cockpit so if you want to armor your cockpit you get a four-ton cockpit instead of a three-ton cockpit. Fair enough. Then. And it can tank one critical hit. Yeah. Which means if someone hits you in the head with a machine gun and rolls cockpit, they're not automatically splattering your mech warrior. They're, they they do that one little damage, and then you can get the hell out of there. <laughs> so so you pay an extra ton, and it gives you a square on each of the... On each of the slots of that Each of the piece six. Of, yeah. Damn. Okay, so how do we make mechs that are just heads? This seems like the way to go, right? That's, it's, <laughs> it's just for the cockpit. So the cockpit only takes one critical slot, right? Yeah. So on on the thing, there's... there's so, uh, but it does all of the six locations if you pay for a heavy... No, heavy so cockpit? standard cockpit is one, one location, right? So in the head. So next to that on your sheet, you would have oh, a little, a little right. circle okay, and gotcha. you would say, okay, my cockpit's tanked to hit. Right. So it's not right. the whole head. It's just the... Just the cockpit. Just where the cockpit That is. costs you one, but then you could do your life support and the two locations for your sensors, two locations for life support, two locations for centers, sensors, and you could give each of them an armor as well. But they're only half cost. They're only half a ton each. Right. So that total there without adding right. anything else would be one, two, three tons. And they'd all be able to tank one hit. Right. Okay. Got it. But you could then put like a, a tag system in there and make that armor as well. And that'd be able to tank a hit for half a ton. Oh, yeah. So it's it's really, really like powerful. It really is. It just, it it's a lot of weight extra that you're going to have. Um, is, but I don't know. Solaris mechs or whatever could really, like with all the stuff that we've talked about already, wow. Quite a few of the juggernauts that I found that I'm, I'm not necessarily going to talk about, but they they either have a, a major version or they started as uh, Solaris mechs. Right. It's just it, it does. It just makes sense. But one other benefit of armoured components is if you can armour your actuators, right? So if your armoured shoulder or hip actuators haven't received a critical hit, then they are immune to the limb blown off um, result on the critical. So if you get a critical result on a leg and you roll 12 on the critical chance, mm. then that leg is blown off, right? If you've got an armored hip and the hip hasn't taken the little cross yet, it hasn't tanked one yet, then you are immune to that. You take the three criticals mm. because it's still three criticals, exactly. but you're immune to the hip blown or the leg blown off. Ooh. So you can armor all of your actuators, you can armor all of your engine locations, your sensors, your um, gyro, you can armor all of it if you want to. It just costs you tonnage. It does, yeah. That 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 could get quite expensive. Very expensive. But I mean, if you look at those some of those auto cannon uh, ammunition types and things we talked about, yeah, like armor piercing stuff and things like that, ooh, yeah, that could actually be still quite good mm. to have and when when we get onto the armor armor you'll see a lot of stuff that comes up that says that you can't actually be like suffer from those those through armor criticals don't happen anymore oh. with a lot of the armor types that we're going to oh. go into so but the armored components are internal i thought well we may as well keep all the internal stuff together but that's i mean the uh it's probably important for me to w uh, point out here that uh, items designated as fixed during construction of a base Omni mech chassis, including all basic engine uh, items such as engines and cockpits, may not have component armor added as a pod item. Right, so if you've got a unit that doesn't normally have armored stuff and it's got X amount of pod space, 
you can't add armored components to something that's already here. Okay, so if you if you want your Omnimech to have armored, say, an armored engine, because the engine isn't a pod thing, correct? Right, then you have to put it in as base level stuff. You can't add pod space and say, oh, in this version, I'm going to armor the engine. You can't do that. You have to have it as standard. Okay. Right, so I, I know that's a bit weird, but I, I know what I'm trying to say. If, if you've got, um, say, X amount of pod space and you're putting a PPC in there, then you could have a pod with an armored PPC in it, right? Yeah. But say cockpit, right? You can't have a pod space dedicated to armoring the cockpit. Okay, so you, that can't, doesn't you, you work. can't use pod space, you can't use designated pod space to for armor any something fixed, for anything fixed. fixed. Yeah, yeah. I know there, so, there, are, there are some Omni, well, the Inner Sphere had quite a few Omnis to begin with, the Draconis Combine, they had fixed stuff in it. Yeah. It wasn't pod. Yeah. They said, that's really important. We're just going to... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's, there's quite a lot of them. I've seen quite a few like that. But yeah, the, you can't add it as like a retro thing with pod space. So, but if you've got the, the, the tonnage to like apply to this, you can make some seriously tanky units. Yeah, all right. I'm, okay. I'm going to show you one when we do the, the, the um, what's the name that is just, yeah, insane. Everything is armored. It's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, that's, that's some internal structure types. I would steer clear of that composite stuff if I were you, because you will die horribly, but some of the others are really, really cool. Yeah. Um, and armored components and that's internal armoring type things. Yeah. There's some cool stuff in there. There's some good stuff. And like I say, a lot of it's coming up in the juggernauts and I wanted to get it into the system so that we don't have to explain it 900 times. <laughs> so, sorry about that, guys. But we'll probably go on to some different armor types. We'll go on to some different armor types. I can't make Pillar's phone work. Uh, and But that's that's it for now. All good? All right. All right. Yes. All right. Thank you, mate. Stay groovy. Bye. See you in the next one.